So what I want to talk to you guys about today is something that is kind of blazing up all over the internet, which is hipster racism. Um, now, for those of you who had no idea what this is, just like I kind of didn't until very recently, hipster racism is really more properly defined as ironic racism. And ironic racism is simply just someone making a racist remark with the kind of intention behind it being that I'm obviously not racist. So me saying this is not racist. But at the at the end of the bottom line of it being that the sentiment that's being expressed, no matter how well educated it's coming from the person, is still a racist um, comment. So as I was reading the articles, I was kind of trying to understand why this conversation is happening right now and why it's catching so much fire, I guess I would say. Oh, Hunger Game shout out. Uh, why it's catching so much fire all over the place. And what I could glean from everything that I've read is that it really kind of started with the premiere of the new HBO show, Girls, which is written by a writer named Lena Dunham. And she's 25 years old and has a show on HBO, which is pretty freaking crazy. And um, the whole show is basically following these four women who live in um, New York City and they're like 20 somethings who are kind of at the beginning of their careers. It, some people have described it as the indie version of Sex in the City. And so um, some of the criticism of the show was that it was very well written, the characters were intriguing and they were well developed, but why are there no people of color on this show? Why is there not at least one, you know, black female character amongst these friends? Jenna Wortham, who is actually a technology reporter for the New York Times, wrote an article for The Hairpin, and basically it was a review of the HBO series Girls. And she basically says at the end, you know, these girls are ballsy, they're fun, they're lively, they're like us, you know, like every young 20-something woman out there. And she concludes that, that phrase, I'm paraphrasing here, but she concludes that by saying, I just wish that I saw someone like myself alongside of them. What really sparked this to then lead to a conversation about hipster racism from what I can see, this is totally just my opinion, I could be wrong on the origins of how this conversation was started, was that the a staff writer for the show named Leslie Arfin uh, tweeted a comment that said, what really bothered me most about Precious was that there was no representation of me. You know, and the whole joke supposedly being that, you know, Precious is about um, a, a poor, overweight black girl who's uneducated, living in New York City. And so Leslie Erfin, as um, a white woman, I'm very much so assuming, but I'm pretty sure she's white, um, you know, is saying, is basically making the joke that, well, I'm not in that movie, so I don't understand you know, it's supposed to be ironic and funny, but it really just was horrible. <laughs> it was completely insensitive, and it also was very, very much so missing the point. I don't want to stray too far into talking about the show Girls because that show alone has so much of its own um, criticism and there's so much dialogue surrounding the show, but I did watch it simply because there were so many people talking about it that I just kind of had to see what was all the fuss about. Okay. My thoughts on hipster racism. It's just that this is another terminological fad. Um, it sounds really cool. People really like to make fun of hipsters right now. That's been a thing for several years now. People like to mock hipster culture. And, you know, it's one of those things. It's, a, it's to me, a very easy and obvious target. Um, but the problem with, I think, this discussion is that it really lacks a viewpoint of anyone who's actually affected by this so-called racism. Um, or not so-called racism, but by this so-called hipster racism. A couple of days ago, I believe, or maybe just 
yesterday. Jezebel put up an article written by a writer named Lindy West that was titled A Complete Guide to Hipster Racism. And in it, um, you know, West very correctly identifies hipster racism as being more so ironic racism. Um, and she self-identifies herself as an educated, middle-class, white person. <laughs> um, and so I thought that her article was very interesting because this is kind of, her article is where all of the discussion about hipster racism is kind of flowing out from. And what I thought was interesting about it is that while she tries really hard to, and she makes valid points, let me say that to begin with, but while she tries really hard to drive home the point that, you know, any kind of racism is bad no matter how informed the person who's making the racist remark is it just doesn't hit the right note and um i think part of that is just because a lot of her you know conclusions about hipster racism just fall short of a true understanding of how being the subject of racism makes someone really feel sarah Bareilles, who sings that song i'm not gonna write you a love song uh, tweeted something to the effect of just got home and now I'm gonna watch another episode of New Girl Pound Thug Life and West you know and then Zoe Deschanel who's the star of New Girl uh retweeted her and put ha 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 and West uses that as an example of um you know white people kind of trying to adopt norms of black culture like phrases like thug life which was really made popular by the legendary rapper Tupac Shakur. And, um, she, you know, it's basically like a way to subvert the culture, but she's saying that that's a racist remark. And then her explanation of that is, obviously you shouldn't say that because it's mean. And why would you want to be mean? And you can say racist things, but you shouldn't. And I think that that's really a good point to come to because I think that a lot of people who are not necessarily... Um, privy to people of color for whatever reason, either there are none where they live, which is possible, it happens all the time, um, or they just have not made those connections for whatever reason, have a really hard time articulating what's the problem with racism. It, there's only so much that you can feel on behalf of another person when you have not walked in their shoes. And, you know, I don't say that to be glib, but there's a lot of things that I don't presume to understand about other people's struggles. Because if I haven't experienced it personally, there's a line up to which I can really be understanding sometimes white people or people of other races. Because I don't want to put this all on white people because I think it's just a general lack of understanding between everyone. Uh, people don't know because... When things like that happen, at least for me personally, it's not even always worth the effort of explaining to someone why what they said was ignorant and getting into an emotional conversation with them about how what they said made me feel. I really just wanted to make this video to present one point of view from one brown girl out of the millions of brown girls that there are all across the world and to say that conversations like these while people find them probably really intellectually stimulating they do very little to actually help the people that are supposedly being oppressed so at the end of the day hipster racism is not new it's racism you can dress it up with any fancy term you'd like you can come out with all of the witty and cool new examples that you think you have about why this is an emerging new trend but the bottom line is just that it's simple ignorance people are ill-informed because they they lack the understanding from a person who has those real experiences and so what i would say is that people really just need to be more open to dialogue but that doesn't mean that if you're trying to understand something that you go to the first person of color that you see and force them to be an ambassador for their whole race of people. You have to engage in dialogue with people who are open to having that conversation and who really want you to understand how and why they feel the way that they do. Um, was I personally offended by Leslie Arfin's tweet? Not really, but more so just because, not because it's not offensive, but because who cares? It's ignorant. It's just totally ignorant. You know, I think that sometimes people want to be so up in arms about issues on behalf of other people without ever even consulting those very people who should be upset. And so maybe next time before we make a term for a new fad of racism or, you know, the latest shocking or appalling thing that someone has said, we might want to actually consult someone who's being affected by it and try to better understand 
why or maybe even if it affects them. When, you know, certain issues come up and hope that we can discuss them and have meaningful dialogue. And I hope that everyone is having a wonderful Friday and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.